Well, hello, and welcome to our series of lectures on attention. We went over the basics in our first series of lectures on attention, and in this series, we're going to do a deeper dive. I'm going to start off talking about a classic study in divided attention. Then we're going to talk about divided attention as it applies to driving, that is distracted driving, and what happens when people drive while they're distracted by something else. We'll also talk about this really interesting phenomenon called inattentional blindness, that if you're not paying attention to something, you're essentially blind to it. We'll talk about a classic theory of attention as a way to bind or integrate information together. And then lastly, I'll talk to you about a uh, disorder of attention called hemi-neglect. So divided attention, let's start with this classic study. This is a study by Snyder and Schifrin done way back in 1977. And they wanted to see, can you actually divide your attention? In other words, can you do two different things at the same time? And if so, what does it take in terms of practice at least? So the task that Snyder and Schifrin had people do required them to do two things at the same time. First, people were given a target so they were doing a, um, a monitoring task. They had to see if this target appeared in a, a series of letters and numbers. Then after the series of letters and numbers disappeared, so um, there were 20 frames, at the end of the 20th frame, they were given a new question that said, um, here's another letter or number, say the letter C. Did this letter C appear in the series that you just saw? So like in the example, let's say in the example uh, on the left, uh, you can target the number three, then you have to look at each display and um, see if there's a number three in any of them. And then at the end of the series of 20 frames, you're asked, oh, by the way, was there a C in there? So what Snyder and Schifrin found in this study is that yes, you can divide your attention across two simple tasks, but it requires a whole lot of practice. Um, so what they found is that if they had people perform this task for hundreds of trials, so over and over again, then they could learn to divide their attention across the two paths, two, two tasks, and their performance as they're getting more and more practice, their performance um, in the two tasks are steadily, is steadily increasing. Um, this isn't unlike what um, very high level athletes need to do to achieve performance. They have to practice over and over and over and over again to make some aspects of their performance um, automatic, right? Requiring a very little attention. If you've ever tried to learn a new sport, maybe golf or archery or whatever, You'll be shocked at how hard it is to remember all the different steps. But if you practice over and over and over again, eventually it becomes automatic, um, at least for simple tasks. Now, when things become automatic, uh, they obviously require very little attention. In fact, if you try to pay attention to an automatic process, everything gets messed up. So try this. Next time you are reading something, try to think about the eye movements that you're making as you read. So you don't fixate every word, right? It's a, it's a kind of a complicated process that your visual system goes through to figure out which words you have to fixate and where and for how long. But that's an automatic process because you are expert readers. But Try to take that automatic process and attend to it, and you'll find out it's, it's a train wreck. You cannot read and pay attention to your eye movements anymore. Similarly, you are an expert at walking, so try walking down the stairs while you're thinking about walking down the stairs. Actually, don't, because you may trip and fall. That's what happens. Okay, come back, and we'll talk about distracted driving.